Hi, I'm Rich Binsaka for the Propane Education and Research Council. Now, in communities across the country, including here in Malvern, Pennsylvania, builders, remodelers, and homeowners are taking extra efforts to improve the energy efficiency of their homes. Now, for the most part, that's about lowering their energy bills, but it also has something to do with treading a little bit more lightly on the earth. This groundswell of interest and investment in green building has resulted in a much larger market of products and systems that address energy and resource efficiency. Now, the result of that is that we're seeing lower costs, increased availability, and advanced technology, but also a market of, of options that's almost overwhelming. So the question begs, how do you make the best choices in terms of energy efficiency? And that's what we're here to find out. A new report from Newport Partners, a research firm in Davidsonville, Maryland, entitled Whole House Analysis of Energy Efficient Upgrades for Existing Homes, is intended to help answer that question by analyzing a variety of what's called energy efficiency measures, or EEMs. The report allows housing professionals and homeowners to better understand and prioritize their choices. The report looked at everything from lighting and energy star appliances to new windows, tankless water heaters, and renewable energy sources. Really, just about every option available to reduce energy consumption, as well as carbon emissions and greenhouse gases. The analysis was fairly simple. Compare first cost, the cost to purchase and install each product or system, against an expected energy savings over a period of time, resulting in a cost benefit for each option. The report then ranks each energy improvement by that measure, from best to worst. And some of the findings may surprise you. The researchers also considered different climate conditions and energy rates to come up with a cost benefit for different areas of the country. What's a good investment here in Malvern may not be as good in Sacramento or Tampa. Now, even more impactful than a top-down list of improvements, there's also a cumulative effect in terms of integrating each system and product. Jim Renahan is a local builder who understands the value of systematic approach to energy efficiency. For his most recent projects, Jim has either rebuilt or transformed a handful of homes in this Malvern neighborhood to be far more energy efficient. That commitment includes converting the homes from heating oil to propane to fuel a variety of products and systems as well as provide a cleaner and more efficient energy source. So Jim, tell us why it makes sense for you as a builder in this market to, to go with propane. Well, essentially in this particular neighborhood where we're working, we're dealing with 1950 split level homes that are primarily on oil. And whether it be a complete renovation or, or with an addition or whether it be a knockdown in a new home, the clients are looking for a more energy efficient option. And uh, our decision there is to usually switch over to propane. Our process of that is to sit and talk with our clients is about the advantages of propane. And then we discuss the various components of the home that are going to operate off of the propane. Okay. So walk us through the process of making the conversion. You've got let's existing home with, a, with an oil boiler, um, some sort of a, you know, a tank. Uh, you want to move it to propane. So walk me through kind of the steps to make that conversion. Okay. It's a little different process whether we're doing a complete renovation in addition versus a new home. A uh, new home is much more simplistic in nature. First thing we do is you know, address the reasons why, as I just talked about, with the homeowner. Make sure that they're on board. Then if it's a knockdown, we pull the old furnace. Typically, we donate it. We go ahead and build the house, and we, we, each individual house gets its own 1,000-gallon, usually, uh, propane tank. Okay. And then we hook the various components to that. If it's a renovation, it's a little different. We're, we're limited in terms of uh, existing mechanical rooms and, and tying in existing components, but it's somewhat similar, meaning each home gets its own 1,000-gallon tank, and we just convert over to a, uh, to a propane-fired furnace. Right. So, so the tank uh, is necessary. Propane is necessary because you don't have natural gas in this neighborhood. Natural gas is not available in this neighborhood. So propane is an energy-efficient, clean solution. It's easy for us to install. You know, our first contact is to our propane supplier, uh, and then uh, we just lay out tank locations and go from there. Okay, and 1,000 gallons seems like a lot, but that gives the homeowner a lot of options in that case. Absolutely. Well, in a lot of cases, I mean, you're talking about running stoves, tankless hot water heaters, gas fireplaces. Some cases, like the home we're standing in now, had an existing pool that we then tied into it as well. So it's a very versatile option. Of so we're here with Ted West of Liberty Propane at uh, one of Renahan Building Group's jobs. Uh, Ted, tell me typically how you work with a builder, developer, or a modeler to bring propane to the site or to convert from another fuel source to propane. First of all, we'd like to be there at the beginning of the planning stages. So to see the site, to see the plans, um, the capacity, basically what the location is. Can we fit a propane tank on site? Um, what their BTU load is, uh, things of that nature. So if we can get into the beginning, 
um, it's going to save the builder and the developer a lot of time. Okay. Are there things that you look at from a standpoint of capacity, location in the site, what it's going to power? Definitely. The size of the tank, the location, um, especially the size of the lot, the property line, a lake, a creek, um, anything else like that will decide the location as well as the size of the tank that's going to power the house. Okay. So in this job in particular, where are we in that process? What's been done? Uh, the house was actually here. It was knocked down. It was an oil uh, to propane conversion. Um, it's now been built back up and we've installed a thousand gallon propane tank in the backyard. That thousand thousand gallon propane tank will run all the appliances as well as the the heating and will also power the heater for the pool in the backyard that was existing. Okay. Are there things you mentioned getting in involved in the process early with a builder or developer or mm -hmm. modeler in terms of, of knowing what you've got to deal with before you get on site? Are there other things that, that a builder can do or not do that's going to kind of make this job go smoothly? Um, basically education of the buyer or the homeowner. If they go right from the planning stage and explain to the homeowner we're thinking about going propane or this is what propane can do for you or propane works well at this location. Once the homeowner's comfortable with that, it's pretty easy after there. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. When you talk to homeowners, tell me about kind of their level of awareness of propane and kind of what, uh, how you educate them about that. In this particular marketplace, I have a very educated buyer. Uh, in most cases, they know all about propane. They understand the energy efficiency of it. Most of it's private work, so they're very anxious to get off of oil and onto propane. Now, in this particular house, it's a beautiful house. Um, tell us particularly what is, is being run on propane in this house. There are, uh, beginning in the crawl space, there are two tankless uh, water heaters. We have the stove that we're standing in front of. There's a propane fireplace in the next room. And there are two uh, furnaces, one okay. in the basement and one in the attic. Okay. As well as a pool. Right. And okay, what so will be a grill outside. Okay. Um, okay, so as a business person, as you think about making these conversions, or maybe since you've made so many of them, do you have some best practices or things that you do that you don't kind of hitch up the process at all? Well, one of the, one of the best practices for us is, is, a, is a strong relationship with both our, uh, our propane suppliers. We use both Liberty Propane and Great Valley Propane. And um, that relationship in and of itself helps ensure a smooth transition. Other than that, it's a lot of site planning, making sure you know where the tank's going, how the line's coming in, and kind of incorporate it with a number of other, you know, energy efficient slash green uh, features of the home. As Jim and Ted and other housing professionals know, a home's energy source is a cornerstone of its ability to operate efficiently. But he also knows that to achieve better energy performance in his homes, he can't stop there. Jim, besides propane, what other things do you do to kind of uh, set a foundation of energy efficiency in your homes? Well, building a home, an energy efficient home, is really not a project, it's a process. So everything has to kind of work together. So it, it starts by proper forms of insulation, uh, uh, Tyvek wrapping the home. We use PEX tubing, which is uh, uh, more efficient than the old use of copper. So what we try to do is get everything to work together in the home to be really a complete building envelope of, of energy efficiency. Okay, so that sets a really good foundation, pretty basic stuff, but a really good foundation. How does that enable then the pieces of equipment that you put in, the furnaces, the stoves, how to, to operate more energy efficiently? Well, as I said, it's a process, so everything has to work together. So if the home is insulated and the thermal penetration barrier is, is better and it's insulated better, it allows the heating components to work better and the, different, and the different features of the home to work better. Okay, great. Now, Jim Renahan may not incorporate all of the energy improvements listed in the report, but his basic commitment to energy efficiency improvement of the building envelope, a more efficient energy source, basically go a long way to allowing him to achieve his goals. It also underscores the fact that there's a lot of options when it comes to energy efficiency, and that builders can mix and match those options to meet budget demands as well as market demand. Let's take a closer look at the Newport Partners report. As mentioned earlier, the report looked at several energy improvements in the context of existing homes to determine simple payback as a balance of cost and energy efficiency. They also separated those investments into elective and non-elective energy improvements. Essentially, those products and systems that a homeowner or contractor might choose, such as replacement windows or a rooftop solar array, versus those that would need to be replaced if they suddenly failed, such as lighting, appliances, and space heating. Overall, across 10 different cities and five distinct climates, the report found that a package of new, compact fluorescent lighting and air sealing the gaps in the building envelope were the improvements with the best combination of energy savings and cost effectiveness. Both, in fact, have payback periods of perhaps only a year. Other improvements that ranked high on the list include a propane-fueled clothes dryer, a high-efficiency propane furnace, 
in a dual fuel high efficiency electric heat pump combined with a propane furnace. That might surprise some folks, even those who are well versed in energy efficient housing, to learn which of the improvements actually scored fairly poorly on the report. For instance, an Energy Star dishwasher with an installed cost of about $800 showed a payback period of over 10 years. In summary, the Newport Partners report found that the basics, upgraded attic insulation, better windows, and improvements to the building envelope were among the top energy and cost efficient options to choose. Which brings us back to Malvern and Renahan Building Group. Jim, there's a lot of new options, a lot of new products on the market that purport to help a homeowner save energy. How, how do you go about evaluating those options and, and making sure that they're right for you and for your clients? It's, uh, it, it's really a cost-benefit analysis for each uh, individual product. And in addition to that, you want to take a hard look at what type of testing the product's been through and how long it's been, uh, how long it's been out. And then in each individual case, you determine really what the value is to the builder or myself, my company on the bottom line, and then what long-term benefit it, it, uh, it offers the client. Is there a recent example or examples of, of when you've done that, looked at a new product and, and gone through that process? Yeah, there's actually a couple different examples. One is we're looking at a foam that you would spray on the back side of the sheathing along both sides of the studs, which helps you know, uh, uh, improve the exterior penetrations. Uh, another one, frankly, is relating to uh, propane. We, for some reason, don't do a lot of uh, propane dryers. And one of the things we're going to start looking at is whether there, we know there's a long-term benefit associated to using propane. Now we have to look at it in terms of getting that homeowner to convert from that electric dryer, which is the most common thing we have, to, uh, to a propane dryer in their new home. Okay. Well, excellent. Jim, thanks for letting us come and, and visit you here, look at your work, and pick your brain a little bit. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, that's it from Malvern. I'd like to thank Jim Renahan and Ted West for their time and their insight. For more information about whole house energy efficiency, propane energy, and other training content, including the Newport Partners Report, go to buildwithpropane.com. For the Propane Education and Research Council, I'm Rich Bintaka. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.